Arts education in the United States is often considered to be outside of the core curriculum, shoved aside to meet the prescribed math, science, and language requirements. When arts are taught in the classroom, they oftentimes do not speak to the students' experiences and tastes. Hip-hop has been slowly accepted into academic spaces like Harvard and UMass Boston for the powerful stories and captivating written work that have been created throughout its now 40-year history. Audible has collaborated with the Loop Lab on a series of pieces that explore English language fluency and literacy within the Port neighborhood of Cambridge. In this piece, we discuss the opportunities and barriers in using hip-hop as a language arts teaching tool. We spoke to hip-hop artist and composer Billy Dean Thomas and educator Kristen Knowlton about their experiences with hip-hop culture inside and outside the classroom. I'm walking down the road to where success is Blame my adolescence to the folks I disrespected But sorry, not sorry, take you on a word safari Penmanship like a panther flow blacker than Afro Barbies Thank my mama who raised me, I'm lying Commas raised me, I'm flying Past the pages of sentences and my phrases But to all the haters who you know we don't believe you And yeah, you know we gonna tell it to our people So why you going? I'ma cast a new part Better yet, I wrote the movie, wrote the script, I'm art And I be like Dr. Seuss in the booth I'm just spitting truth and it's proof And it's in the pudding, it shoulda, coulda been you It's me Would you able to introduce yourself briefly? Who are you? What do you do? Sure. Uh, my name is uh, Billy Dean Thomas, and um, I'm a hip hop artist and also composer. Um, I've been making music probably since I was 13 years old, so for a little bit of a while. My name is Kristen Knowlton. I'm a 12 year veteran teacher here at CRLS, Cambridge Ridge Latin School. Um, I am a special educator, so I've done predominantly math work, but this year I'm running a postgraduate program for students that teaches um, adulting 101 is the easiest way that I can say that. I think my first introduction to hip hop ever was Biggie Smalls. I think I was like 10 years old and um, my, uh, my mom's partner at the time was listening to a Biggie song and I was just so captivated by his flow. And also like after seeing what he looked like, I think it was really shocking to me that he wasn't like conventionally like this handsome, beautiful person. I really resonated with that with Biggie Smalls because he was confident no matter what, it didn't matter what he looked like and the skills spoke for themselves. I didn't have a lot of friends that listened to it. I mean, I'm a white girl from the middle of New Hampshire. Um, not a lot of my friends listened to it. And then when I went to college, I had a lot more friends that listened to it because I came to Boston. Um, and I appreciate it and liked it, but I felt like it wasn't my space. So it felt weird, like loving it, but feeling kind of like a poser in that space. So it was hard. Um, and then I think what really got me into wanting to learn more about it and experience it in a different way is listening to kids talk about it in school and working here at CRLS and listening to kids say, you know, I'm going to spit some rhymes later and whatever and like and drop some beats and like, okay, so this language that I shouldn't be using, but it sounds cool when they say it, so I wonder what they're talking about. I think that's really what got me into understanding more about that world and that it's something that is not a niche, it's a world. I don't remember ever being in a classroom where folks just like played rap music as a way to be a tool to learn about a poetic device like that. That's so simple and doesn't cost you anything. In the modern political sense, it's not part of Common Core. It's not what has been sort of prescripted for federal and state governments to say this is what should be ta taught. Um, that isn't to say that it's not something that it can be used to teach other things or that it could be connected to and integrated with to teach other things, but it still feels like the other instead of being a part of. It's because there's still so much of a stigma surrounding, you know, hip hop and how it's violent or just all of these things that were really sort of created in the 80s or probably even before that I'm not aware of. Um, but really, 
I think one, it has to be really recognized as an actual valuable, even though I think it's valuable and like my community thinks it's valuable. Um, I think the mainstream needs to value it as a credible form of literacy. Until that common core, what everybody thinks should be taught can be shifted, a lot of places won't feel the need to shift. I feel like there are a lot of teachers here that know that a shift needs to take place, and some of them are shifting their curriculum to incorporate it, but again, there's a lot that needs to be done, and the need versus the want becomes problematic, I think. If it's done well, it's done well. I think that there are some people that want to be able to use it, but if it's superficial, you can feel that it's superficial. I just felt like it wasn't my area to be sharing. I wanted to pass the mic to somebody who could be the expert to share it, which is why I think asking students to do projects to write or to record or to speak or to perform is more powerful than me saying, I'm going to perform or let's watch somebody else perform and then talk about it because you can watch anybody you want at home. You don't need me to teach you to watch somebody. I think it's more important if somebody among us can share that and I don't have the comfort to share that. I'm not, I'm not going to spit rhymes. That's not how it <laughs> So I worked for an organization called Hip Hop Reeducation, and basically what we did is we went inside of elementary schools, high schools, and we sort of infused hip hop into academic classes. So for example, um, my first class that I worked with, I think it was a sixth grade class, a science class, and we were supposed to be talking about the body systems, and so we had them writing rhymes to talk about digestion and things of this sort because it allowed folks to sort of retain information better um, using the repetition and using, you know, having them come up with their own rhyme schemes was really beneficial. And it actually was proven that a lot of folks' test scores increased because of this sort of method of teaching and reusing hip hop into academic classrooms. Does it challenge educational literacy? Absolutely. But I also think that it's less about hip hop and more of like, um, I guess respectability, like respectability politics. Even though there's like really dark, intense things that happen in some of the songs, it is reality. And so I think it's really important to have a balance between, you know, telling people the truth and exposing truth um, and, and also like making it like child friendly or like what does that even mean right because a lot of times we think we're protecting children but they already know what we think we're gonna surprise them with so there's I think it's really just about um, providing a space to be honest and truthful and to also unpack like just because something is traumatic doesn't mean that you can't unpack it with your class for me in the work that I do, it basically means that I need to create a situation or environment or a lesson that someone else can come in to teach. And I, I would welcome that anytime, but I don't know that all teachers would do that because to teach, you have to have a certain level of, um, you command a certain level of uh, a presence in the classroom and you have to have a certain level of con control, we'll say. And not a lot of teachers are great at giving up some of that control. So they may not be good at co-creating with their students because they feel like they're not in control of that situation. And therefore they may not be good with having another person come in and co-create with them because they're again not in control of that situation. I think it, that can, that's probably the biggest part of it that's problematic. Not all my students enjoy hip hop. Some of them, they don't really get it. It doesn't relate to their experience because they didn't grow up with it. Um, they're kids from other cultures and it's just not like they'll listen to it, but it's not part of who they are. So learning from it could actually be really powerful and important. So I'm going to backtrack on that and say that maybe I should. Um, but I will also say that for some of my students who are on the spectrum, literally the beats, which I enjoy and absolutely love, are overstimulating and it's a sensory thing for some of the kids. So they don't want to listen to it at any particular volume or any, in any particular way. But I think we could still access the lyrics. So again... I don't know why I don't have that. I don't have a good answer for that. I haven't done it yet, and I should. I, I wouldn't 
communicate, I would do a performance first. Um, and yeah, so I would generally what I like to do, especially with younger folks is like, they're not going to listen to you unless they see that you're good at something. And so for me, I would start off with like a little 30 second where I'm just like spitting some crazy bars. And then they're like, oh, all right, let me chill now. And like, listen. And then um, I would probably just say, you know, um, based on like what you heard or like, I'm, I was really inspired and excited to like do that for you guys today because that was sort of like the reason that I was able to like, or gain interest in writing in class. And like, you know, because of, you know, uh, listening to certain rappers or whatever, like I was able to get this interest. And then it like actually helped me write my essays better. And it, like, you know, make sure you're tying in, in some capacity, like how being in class right now can actually help you if you have this dream. Not everybody wants to be a rapper or a basketball player, but like, um, you know, if you do have an interest in an art form or writing scripts or whatever it is, or if you're a chef, you gotta write a menu, like, um, you know, really tying in why it's important and literacy is like very, very crucial for art. Hip hop can be a powerful modern device for teaching critical thinking, creativity, and communication, yet it is not being leveraged today. This is an opportunity to tap into and engage the students and community members of the Bork neighborhood. Artistic activists like Billy Dean Thomas have shown that hip hop can be used effectively in the classroom, and educators like Kristen Knowlton are starting to see the value in incorporating it into their curriculum. But before they can engage students with the art form, teachers first need to be willing to open up their classrooms to outside voices and provide freedom for their students to practice self-expression. 